guys? We're coming at you from Rehoboth Beach on the Atlantic coast in Delaware, the first state in America. It's known for its beaches and it has a really long boardwalk. I think it's about a mile. And we just parked here. We haven't explored yet, but we're going to get some dinner started. I'm going to do marinated flank steaks tonight. It's Saturday. I'm feeling a little special. <music> Hi, I'm Christine with IreneIronFitness.com. I live in my 2014 Airstream Interstate Sprinter van with my husband Aaron. Together we're going to bring you some videos on fitness and nutrition while living in our van, traveling the country. Flank is actually a really good beef cut. It's really lean in comparison to others. And try to always pick the leanest cuts you can, like flank or sirloin or filet mignon or very high percentage lean ground beef like a 93 percent so for this marinade it's going to be very easy it's very quick and you want to try to get it to marinade for four to 24 hours we're going to be pushing the limits today and getting in on that four hour end but we'll take what we can get so we're going to start with some balsamic vinegar and i have that here the spices are very simple. We have salt, fresh cracked pepper, rosemary, Dijon mustard, and one garlic clove. I'm just doing a half portion, so when you go to our website and you read my blog, the recipe will be for double this amount, but I'm just cooking enough for what we're eating tonight, so it's a little bit less. So we're going to start with my microplane. I'm just gonna help this garlic along by microplaning it. And this is something I do a lot in my recipes. It's a lot quicker than if you were to get out a cutting board and mince it. And it also gets it a lot finer. So depending on what you're making, this microplane might be a really good tool for you. I love it. Since you're using a blender or an immersion, it's really not completely necessary, but because my liquid amount is so low, I wanted to just help out the garlic because it might not get fully chopped up if I were to just throw it in there whole. So I'm just giving it a head start this way. And we're just going to put in salt, pepper, rosemary, right into the balsamic, and then a little bit of mustard, Dijon. And then I'm going to move this out of the way. Whatever you have, if you have a blender, use a blender. If you have like a ninja blender, use that. I have this immersion blender, which I really like because I can use it for a lot of different things. So I'll just start it on low. And you want to just drizzle in your oil. Like I said, my liquid amount in this blender cup is less than what is ideal, but we're going to roll with it. And even if you don't have a blender cup, it's something you could just totally put in a jar and shake. But if you can blend it, it's a little bit better. It'll help give it a thickened up emulsion. So you can see in here, might make a little mess here. It's just a little thicker than if you were to just hand shake it. So next, you want to take your flank steak. And I'm just going to use a small Ziploc bag because my pieces are just two of them. You could use a shallow baking dish for marinating. Or if you have lots of steak, you could do a gallon size Ziploc bag. And then I'm just going to pour right in and I'm going to reserve some of it of the dressing to actually serve with the dinner. Uh, you can use it to put on a salad or just to top some tomatoes. So we're going to save that and you want to just massage this a little bit. Make sure everything's coated. You can see there's room for it in there to move around. 
and that's it. So we're going to put this in our refrigerator for about four hours. And we're going to go explore the beach. We're going to go do some walking. And then when we come back and cook dinner, we'll pick up there. walk on the boardwalk there was so many people there I wasn't expecting that crowd and all I could smell was mini donuts and funnel cakes and euros not a good spot to go test your willpower before dinner but we made it back I started dinner up and tip number one for cooking in an RV or a tight space have everything ready on your countertop before you start to cook so you don't have to be um, sacrificing counter space in the middle of something. So I have everything that I need and I have my sides started. I'm just going to do this with some fried onions and green beans and uh, some rice. So I have rice cooked on the side and ready to go. Carbohydrates and starches hold their heat really well so when you have to share your space of the burners that's the first thing you want to get done is your carbohydrate starch and pull it aside because that will stay warm really easily. So now, to the star of the show, we're going to go to the flank steak. And we had this refrigerated to marinate for four hours. And you want to take it out. When you take it out, try to shake off as much excess marinate as possible. So I'm just going to remove it. And there's not too much on here because I was a little... Um, tight on it because I want to save some of it for my side veggies. So I only have that much waste that I'm going to discard. And my pan is heating up. It's almost there. But before we put it on there, we just want to give this a little bit of salt and pepper. So I just use the Himalayan pink salt and black pepper. And that's all we're going to do to season the steak itself. And it's just going to be really good because you're going to get a little hint of the rosemary that's in the marinade. And you're going to get that balsamic that's a little bit sweet. And then um, I've just been craving some onions lately, like caramelized onions and green beans. So it's going to be a really good side. But honestly, whatever vegetables you have, is the best side. Whatever you have in your fridge, nothing can go wrong with this really. So I think we're pretty hot now. So we're just going to put in a teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil. And it smells so good in here guys. Shake it around. You really want to make sure your pan is hot. These steaks are pretty thin. They're, I'd say half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick. You want to always trim as much big fat off as you can. So this side is pretty lean. This side has a little bit of fat left on it. I'm going to put that side down so that it renders first. And that's what you want to hear. Oh, and it smells amazing already. So we're going to let this go. You don't need to move it around. You just want to let it do its thing. And depending on how you like your steak done, and depending on how long you've had it out of the fridge, 
That will determine the amount of time you want to let it cook on each side. I happen to like my steaks rare. So we're going to just give mine like three minutes on each side, give or take. All right, so these steaks have only been cooking for a quick couple of minutes and they're ready to flip already. That balsamic has a higher sugar content, so it's going to brown up really well. So you want to be careful not to burn it. But it's a nice char, and quick two minutes is all it took for us. We're going to let this side go. And I'm actually going to throw my beans into this pan to get those started so that it will all time together. So I'm going to get those in. In with the onion. And one thing that I like to do just to help my veggies cook is add a tiny bit of water to the pan to help it steam cook a little bit. So I have water down here actually. And the steaks are looking nice. We're so going to be ready to pull off. We're going to let them rest on a cutting board with some tin foil so that the juices can settle before we slice into it. Cooking in tight spaces. Have your stuff ready to grab so that you're not scrambling more than you need to. And quickly get it covered. They look beautiful. You want to pull your pan off the heat. I learned that's the number one way to, to keep your nonstick a nonstick is don't let it burn with nothing in it. So up here I have my rice. I'm just going to get my rice back up here. If it needed to be reheated, this is the perfect opportunity to get it rewarmed while your steak is resting. It's all about sharing that uh, real estate space in your kitchen. And then a little bit of salt and pepper on these vegetables. So that's finishing up. I'm going to get this stuff out of the way so I have some room to slice. And then when you're dealing with flank steak, you want to make sure when you cut it, you cut it against the grain. And that's going to help it taste more tender while you're eating. So when we talk about a grain on a steak, it's referencing, oh, watch the drip, it's referencing these fibers that you can see run this way. And we're going to cut it this way against it. So it's forming a cross with those grains. So we're going to dig in right now and get it plated up. And hopefully you can uh, try this recipe out. Go to my website, ireneironfitness.com, and you can print out the recipe on my blog. It's the balsamic marinated flank steak. And let me know what you think. So now we're going to take this reserved dressing that we made earlier and we're just going to drizzle it right over whatever sides you have. So these tomatoes. It's going to be so good with that balsamic dressing right on top and you can even put some on your green beans and your onions and it's just going to tie everything together and give your side dishes some kick to make it special so that's it here's our plate it's beautiful and it's definitely a weekend worthy meal something that's more special than a weeknight and I hope to see you next week. We're going to be traveling through Philly and into Atlantic City area where we're going to get to a new RV park. So we'll see you there.